here. It was beautiful and talented. Stephanie, and I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thank you for having me. Now, I apologize how I sound now. I'm almost losing my voice for whatever the reason was. <laughs> but, uh, well, like I was saying, it's a half hour, 45 minute conversation. You can say anything you want. Do anything you want. You can curse if you want to. You can say I'm an asshole for messing up your last name. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and compete with whatever you want to do. Okay. So starting off, what can you tell me about yourself? Well, I am an actress. I also have a, um, a company where I make hand crochet garments. So I'm pretty busy. Um, I am just actually, I'm currently rehearsing for a play. Uh, in Montreal called Nisei and the Narna by Paul Van Dyke. So I've been, you know, rehearsing every day and really excited. It's going to be opening in February. So, yeah. That's really cool. What can you tell us about your play? Same before we were rudely interrupted by the Skype internet. You were saying you are an actress and you are in a play, currently in yeah. a play. What can you tell us about that? We started rehearsing um, about the beginning of December, and um, now we're in full, full rehearsal for our show opening in February. Um, um, yeah, and it's about a young Japanese Canadian girl in World War II in Canada and in the um, internment camps. Um, so it's it's very, it's just, you, you go on an adventure with this young girl, and, and there's a lot of um, Native, Native American myths mythology as well as puppetry to depict some of the characters. It's really something very interesting and uh, challenging that I've been on for the next uh, few months. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this in any relation or similar to um, Unbroken, or is this completely different? I don't know if I've seen Unbroken. No, take my word for it. Um, for me, once was enough, so that's not really sane. <laughs> A lot about the movie. It's it basically it was an hour and a half. They cut off, cut out of it. But I was really just, why am I even watching it, dude? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But well, you, I don't think it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was an okay movie, but at the end, he felt it's like quite a nice story. <laughs> well, that's what the whole point. I thought was a happy story, but. But at the end of it, he felt like he wanted to punch Anna, Anna Jolie in the face because his, his movie was really bad. Oh, uh, well, no, I don't think the play is that all like that then. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next question I was going to ask you is, uh, how did you become an actress? You know, who influenced you and who impacted your life? Um, I think, I don't know, this might sound cliche, but it's kind of something that I can't really date back to a specific time. I think that um, when I was younger, I was I was very shy, and I seemed to only be comfortable when I was actually like on stage or with people. Um, so I think it came kind of naturally. It was something that I didn't really necessarily choose. Um, it kind of just was always there. Um, and then you know, in high school and stuff, I would take part in productions uh, for uh, different shows and uh, plays, and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And then I went to college and I studied in professional theater. Um, so, you know, since then I've been working really hard and trying to make a name for myself and, uh, you know, uh, trying new things and doing different things. All right. Now, you mentioned, did you go to the schools? You're from Canada, so if this is like yeah. an oxymoron on my part. <laughs> I was going to ask you, did you ever go to the schools in the States? But how different is the school experience from, uh, in college in Canada to compare to the states. Um, I don't know too much about the um, the, the state's education system, but I know that, um, example for me, um, I was able to do a three-year intensive program at a pretty low cost. <laughs> That's pretty, you know, so um, I was really fortunate to have a um, great uh, teaching and great people that in with me and without having to, you know, usually in debt. So there's that. Um, I think that there's there's all the different, um, like I know there's a lot of really good schools in the States and stuff for acting. Um, and I always kind of said, because I studied at a college level, for, which is, I don't think you guys have that here in the States, but that, um, 
like right after you were in high school. And I said if I ever wanted to pursue like, you know, going further in the educational side of acting I do it in the somewhere that would be really challenging, but it, it just never kind of happened that way and it was never necessarily like then at university. But I know that there's a lot of really good actors in New York and stuff. Um, people from my school had gone to as well, so Alright. Well, I don't mean to sound like an idiot, but it was breaking up during the last part. Could it, eh, it's fine, it's fine. You can always edit it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's, people say it's like the internet connects and you know, uh, I don't know if you have Optimum where you are. So basically, it's a big um, monopoly in the state. So it's like, hey, let's jerk around this family and... Uh, but this group of people, and they're saying, hey, if the internet's slow enough, they would pay more. <laughs> so I don't um, know if it's, like, them. I don't know if it's, it's like, you know, that's the single. For, I have no idea, you know. It would be nice if I had a studio. I would love to meet you in person. But for right now, this is good enough, I guess, because, you know, I still live at home. So I'm, a, I'm a work in progress. <laughs> and it froze again. About that, like I was saying, now it's a whole big monopoly with the you know, the internet. It really gets annoying after a while. Yeah. Now, um, the other thing I was gonna ask you is, when you were in college and uh, high school, were you athletic? Did you do a lot of sports? And uh, when you were in college, were you study nerd, party animal? Um, I've never been very sporty. I did uh, did some sports. Um. Like I do the snowboard and ski in the like in the mountains, um, but I was never like athletic in other ways. <laughs> um, and no, I was really I was really serious about my schooling, um, um, so there was no time for you know. Obviously, I enjoyed you know at the time I had some time I had off, but I was very serious about it. Um, I knew that's what I wanted to do, and I took it very seriously. So I knew I was not a party animal. <laughs> <laughs> Now you mentioned snowboarding. You know, do you still do that, or what age did you? Uh, I haven't done it for like seven years, so I know um, because actually I grew up um, in the Laurentians, which is about forty-five minutes away from Montreal, and um, there there's like mountains everywhere. So basically, your whole life you're seeing snowboarding and stuff. And then when I moved to Montreal to go to school, I kind of went back, like maybe, maybe one bike to go snowboarding, and then I never went back. And so. It's on my, t my bucket list, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't even know if I can still do it anymore. It's been so long. Well, it's so kind of funny, you know, I always wanted to go to Canada. If, if you're interested, yeah. I would pay you for your time and be my tour guide. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be the best tour guide. I tend to get off everywhere I go. <laughs> well, that's what makes it an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> You know, I always, I always like the name. Um, what was it? Thunder Bay, Ontario. Yeah. And uh, I always wanted to go to Toronto. I always liked those two names. Yeah, yeah, and Toronto's nice. Now, the other question I was gonna ask you because I asked you, you know, did you do a lot of sports? You know, obviously you did. You're a snowboarder. <laughs> Were a snowboarder. Did he yeah, ever? Great. <laughs> Did he ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids, or not a human pyramid girl? Uh, no. I was like the person watching people do the human pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not, um, like, I was not the type of person to climb a tree. I guess I'm kind of, kind of boring in that way. I don't do crazy stuff like that. <laughs> well, would you be interested in one, or you're not that type of person? No, I'm going to break a <laughs> <laughs> well, you should never. No, no, no. If you do snowboarding, it's kind of like, hey, you like taking a risk. I know, but it's somehow not the same. I I fell so many times when I started snowboarding, and you kind of get used to it, but like a whole human pyramid, like people falling on me, not really what I want to do. Yeah, never say never. <laughs> you know, I always yeah, want. I yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Never too. <laughs> I always wanted to do one. I know I'm a loser. But snowboarding. But you know, snowboarding, if you like to tease me, you know that some I suck at balancing. But I always wanted to be a snowboarder. Yeah, 
Or just do it just for fun. Yeah, I mean, it's tough when you're starting out because you're going to fall a lot. And it's really sore. You get really sore. Um, I, I probably wouldn't be the best to have done it in like seven years or longer, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it's just about getting up and doing it, getting a bit, and kind of understanding like, how far you go back and it kind of gives you an idea of how to do it. But skating, I think, is easier. <laughs> Now, have you ever been to the States before? Come on. Do my life. You're cutting out. Uh, did I ask you, have you ever been to the States? Sorry, cut out. Now, can you hear yeah. me now? Have you ever been to like um? Well, what's your favorite state that you visited? Um, I I guess Florida and New York. <laughs> but I've never like I never been around there. I never like I went to Florida. Uh, or I drove to I drove to Florida a lot. So, you know, go through quite a lot of states. I've been to. Um, I've been to Virginia, I've been to Carolina, I've been to Georgia, I've been to New York, Florida, Virginia, did I say that? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> kind of like that. Boston, um, yeah. A lot of, I don't think I, I haven't been on it, so. But I'd like to, it's really, I really like going to the States. Well, if you're ever in the States, maybe we can hang out and do the interview in person. Uh, near New York, uh, you, it's a big tourist attraction, but uh, you ever been to Woodbury Commons or heard of it? <laughs> you know, it's funny, you know, it's it's a big tourist and uh, people know it from China and other countries, but it's uh, hit and miss. Not missing much. <laughs> no, what is it? Basically, it's the second biggest mall in North America. And people think you're going to get good deals because it's, it's an outlet mall. Oh. But basically, i give you a perfect example. Um, I use this. Wait, wait, maybe I know where it is. Is it surrounded by mountains? Yep, it's in the lower part of New York. Okay, maybe I've been there. Like, it has tons of outlets. And everywhere you look, there's mountains. And it's kind of like when you drive from New York City and you're going to Montreal, there's that. Right? Yeah, it's so, that in there. It's so when you take the throughway all the way up. It's a. I don't. <laughs> but I, I went. And there's like a Levi. Um, yep. And kinds of stores. Okay, I've been there. <laughs> you know, a lot of air shorts. I was there this summer. <laughs> well, we should have hung, hanged out, but you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not much of like a shopper but um, yeah it was, it was pretty cool it seemed like the, the deals weren't that great it wasn't crazy but yeah, I don't know what the big attraction is you know people say it's a big outlet you know it's nice they are building more stores but um, I lived up in New York for about 26 years going to be 27 and my birthday's in a couple of days a couple of weeks you know two three <laughs> oh happy birthday happy yeah, thank birthday. you and um I got the chance to work there. I worked over at the North Face. I worked over at KB Toys, Skessers, US Polo. I don't really see the big attraction, you know. If for like I give you a perfect example, they're saying holiday sales. Mm. You know, holiday sales is sixty, seventy, eighty percent off. Those are good deals, not 10, 20, 30, that's nuts, and you get those every day. Mm -hmm. But I will give you a perfect example. Um, because it's an outlet wall, outlet mall, I use my phone, I don't know if you can see it, I use my phone, for example. You would say this is brand new, but the, um, and you would think you're getting it, the items are brand new, but the truth is you would be just getting it a year and a year and a half later or 
you would be getting it because yeah. you know it's chipped or the paints are run off or it's, so it's not constantly you're getting brand new stuff. You're just getting last season stuff or last year stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, and do you have any questions you want to ask me so far, or? Um, I don't know. Maybe what was um? You've done a lot of interviews. Um, I guess has any of them really stood out for you? I'm just gonna well, video, video quality wise, or does that uh, overall? Uh, not a problem. Uh, basically, um, you asked me about my interviews, and I asked you, um, do you mean just personality wise, or do you mean just as in quality wise? I don't know, just something that like stood out for you, I guess. Interesting, something I don't know. You learned something, or. Um, well, I did 134, thanks to you. <laughs> and, um, let's see, I started off doing just voiceover actors. I interviewed people from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh, cool. I interviewed, um, Ron Reisman, he did the music. I interviewed, uh, Kurgan Mayhem. Uh, who's another good friend of mine. Uh, he was Goldar. Mm -hmm. I interviewed, um, oh, I have to re-interview her, but I did a practice interview with Barbara Goodson. She was Rita Raposa. But, you know, then I did uh, other actors, I did uh, <laughs> other actors, actresses, models, CEOs. But, um, but what really stood out is, you know, the chemistry. Like, mm -hmm. what we're doing. You know, um, it's easy going, it's, it's a good for throw. Uh, working on the friendship building too, that's the other reason I do this. Uh, also, I do it to get over my social anxiety, because I have terrible social anxiety, <laughs> among other things. Really? <laughs> I wouldn't even know. Well, years of practice, and I have. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, this has been helping, so it's kind of like... You know, <laughs> but um, you know, this depends on the chemistry of the person. You know, I have interviewed some people where it's kind of like <laughs> they they just don't want to talk, and like you're pulling teeth, and it's kind of like mm. I can't do a half hour, <laughs> can't do a half hour with this, but yeah. But you know, you know, when I first started, I um, don't ask me why it was a stupid idea on my part. I did all phone com seasons when I first started. I did 72 of those. And basically it was a blank screen and he just heard audio. And people were asking me, what is your demographic? What is your age gap? Do you cater to the whites, black, Asians, whatever? And it's like, I don't know. I know uh, my stuff is being watched and then that's all that matters. But then they're like, oh, we can't work with someone like that. So I did it over. That's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought I had a sponsor, but I had to be paying them. It's kind of like, wait, if you're my sponsor, why do I have to be paying you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's... Now, let's turn that question around towards you. When you, you're an actress, have you ever had a an agent or a sponsor walk up to you and say, we would like to work for you, or you have to pay us to work with you? Um, no. Um, I had approached my agent, uh, you know, we had several meetings, that we decided we wanted to work together. It's a mutual kind of relationship we have when I, when I work. She benefits, and you know, when I don't, we don't, I guess. But um, no, it, it's um, it's pretty nice in Montreal, the community. Um, it's a smaller community, and everyone kind of knows each other, so it's just like a kind of mutual respect, I think, um, and an understanding of the business. And you know, obviously, there's some people that you're going to meet that are not the best, but in general, I think that we're very fortunate in Montreal because everyone is just everyone knows the struggle, <laughs> you know, everyone knows. Um, how hard it can be, and I think that there's a respect and, and, and an admiration to everyone in the community um, in all the different aspects of um, business. 
That's true. I met a couple agents um, where, you know, I'm a big fan of professional wrestling, like WWE, the mm -hmm. WWF, and everything. And they're like, oh, well, this former wrestler, um, I, I don't know, I use um, Trish Stratus, you know, she's a big thing in Canada. Apparently. I don't know if that's true, but, you know, media makes it a big deal. And they're like, oh, you want to set up an interview with Trish Stratus? No problem. That's 25000 And I was like, <laughs> it's like 25000 for what? Oh, you have to pay for airfare. You have to pay for a hotel. You have to pay for the food. Okay. Uh, how much just for what we're doing? That's for a half hour. Oh, 15000 I'm like... I don't have ATM stamped on my forehead. It's like you wouldn't charge fifteen, fifteen thousand for what? I guess it depends on the person, though, because I know some people will do um, interviews and um, public speaking as a profession. So assuming that they'd have to get paid, um, I think it depends. It's a lot of money. <laughs> In any sense, it's a lot of money. So I don't really like. I don't know. I can't imagine charging that much, but. I understand, though, for some people, you know, public speaking is your job. Right. You know. You know, I, um, you don't see, the only people I had to pay, <laughs> the only people I had to pay for getting them on the show, I only did it maybe, like, once or two times, and I said never again. <laughs> it's like... Uh, it was my friend Ron, uh, no, actually not Ron, it was Kurgan. He said, oh, I don't do video interviews unless I'm being paid. Okay, I give you $50. But that's a one-time thing. And then uh, other people, right, upcoming actors and actresses said, oh, you have to pay me for your time. And it's like, no, if you're not going to do it free, and you're not going to support what I'm doing, then it's not meant to be. Yeah, I think... Um, I understand that too. Sometimes, you know, you want to do something, you don't necessarily have the budget, and I think that people need to work together and help each other out, especially when people are starting out, or, or you know, something like what you're doing, and, you know, sometimes you, you need to just do it out of the goodness of your heart kind of thing, you know? Um, and I, like, I've, I ask a lot of, a lot from people, I'll ask them for help when I need it, and I feel like the only way I can respect to fully ask for help is if I give it back to you, you know? And I mean, every situation is different, um, you know, because, like I said, some people do this for a job, and some people, you know, it's important. But I think that there are always exceptions, and people should kind of help each other out more and be a more beautiful world. <laughs> now, our last subject I almost got to ask you is, do you think that a uh, Canadian thing, that people are more... You know, uh, not to sound like an asshole, I apologize if I came off like that, but it's uncensored. People say uh, Canada, you know, people are, you know, they know everything, and they're, they're the nicest people you ever meet. And you're a perfect example of that. You're the sweetest girl I ever met from Canada. Thank you. And, but and then compared to the States, you know, it's all about money, and uh, people are all in their own little bubble. Do you think it's a cultural difference that plays a part, or do you think people are just self as overall? Um, I think every individual is different. I mean, I've been to the States, and I find everyone is extremely nice. I've never had any problems. Everyone is so welcoming and kind and generous. So, my experiences with people from the States, and I have family there too, they're just great people, very open hearted people. So, I think that it is a generalization yes, for the Americans. I think that sometimes based on History or politics, you know, I think that the kind of different. But I think people, you know, I think that there's good people and bad people, and good people and kind people, you know. That's true. Now, wrapping up, do you have any funny stories you like to share, or have you ever pulled any pranks on the people? I'm, I'm, I am not really. A, I'm good prank puller. I feel like I'm not really good. Like, I try sometimes to trick people, like, but it doesn't work. And I'm mostly the person that always gets tricked, you know. But actually, I tricked myself once. I was doing a project, and I was looking on the work for a car commercial. I to, like, analyze car commercials. And I stumbled upon one of the ones where, you know, you're watching it, and it's like, the close, and all this, like, a... 
responder. And like, ah! and, I like my, and I was like freaking out, and I was so embarrassed because I had done that to myself. Like no one had like sent me this video, and then I, I literally scared myself off. Yeah, I'm more the prank person that people prank. <laughs> The most stupidest things I ever done was, um, yeah, I haven't done it as of late. You know, I went to this Italian restaurant and I called myself, but, you know, my family still brings it up and it's like, hey, remember the time we did this? They have two soups. The first yeah. one's called lobster brisk and yeah. shrimp brisk. <laughs> so the guy said, okay, hey, how is it going? I can't take your order. Yes, can I get the, uh, Chicken delight and for the soup can I get the lobster bitch? <laughs> and it's like and he's like excuse me, yes. You know lobster bitch and it says lobster brisk. So that's oh, no. the that's the joke now. It's like every time you say it, it's like do you, if you ever got to say it right or don't say it at all. <laughs> the other one was uh the you know, other Italian place in, uh, I think Brooklyn, went to. I thought it said mouse. M-O-U-S-S-E. -S -S but then it was actually, oh, moose. But I thought it said mouse. And that's kind of like, oh, why is there an X or S in mouse? <laughs> it's all when the guy's like, oh, do you want a dessert? I said, yeah, can I get the chocolate mouse cake? Oh. <laughs> it's like, mouse? Oh, Moose. <laughs> oh, gross. Yeah, those are my dumb moments. You're gonna get the weirdest food. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapping up, do you have anything you want to say? Well, I just want to start off. I just want to say thank you for taking the time to be on my talk show, and I appreciate you know building a friendship with you and you doing this. I apologize, you know, for you know the Skype and FaceTime interference. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like I don't know. It's it is what it is. What it is yeah, but. it's always like that with Skype and, and internet conversations. But do you have anything you would like to say to your fans and listeners who are wrapping up? Um, I guess just to you, as you know, congratulations on doing what you're doing. And I think um, it takes a really strong person to do what you're doing and to acknowledge, you know, that there's an area you want to improve in yourself, and then doing something like this, when you have social anxiety, I mean, I can't even believe that you have social anxiety, so congratulations, keep doing what you're doing, and I hope that more people will, um, watch your show, and people will partake in it, and 